Welcome back to Uncover Your Magic. Today, I am 43 weeks in to this podcast adventure. I haven't missed a week and I don't plan on it. I always talk about as long as you have a strong enough why, the how will just come into place. And that is so true about this podcast for me. It also has opened up so many doors that wouldn't have opened if I didn't say yes to this podcast. Lately, if you are a regular weekly listener, there is a trend in the guests I am bringing on. It's not a conscious thing. It has just unfolded this way. I feel like God brings these guests at the right time in my life when I need to learn something specific from them that will help me in the direction I am going. Lately, it's about asking for bigger things and noticing when I do ask for bigger things, the universe delivers. I must believe it and see it and have the absolute knowing that it is going to manifest in the exact right timing. Just as Abraham Hicks says, put everything that you want into your vortex and then just be happy because really it's being happy that brings us all the magic into our life. That is also what I call surrender to God. Everything is in God's timing. That gives, that just gives me so much peace. So a couple of weeks ago, I had Royce Kristen on who wrote the book, Scripting the Life You Want. I have now incorporated that into my daily routine and have seen miracles manifest almost instantly. It kind of gets addicting almost because I wake up excited to dream bigger. If you haven't heard this episode, I highly recommend you do. It's episode 41. What scripting has done for me is after I am finished, I notice my vibration is so high because I am so excited that all I can do is see my scripting come to life each and every moment of the day. And who doesn't want that? Anyways, as you know, I just launched my raising confidence course and yes, it sold out. And yes, that was one thing I was scripting. It has been one of the biggest blessings about these last 43 weeks of this journey. I saw a need during this pandemic and thought if I could teach parents and kids what I have ingrained in my girls their whole life, I think this time in our lives would be a lot easier. After many mornings of journal writings, looking in the mirror and saying, what is my purpose and how can I serve and use this podcast to inspire people and help kids learn tools that will take their life to a new level at an early age and not have to wait for many years to understand all of these empowering tools to manifest the life of their dreams. Doing something new is scary, but when you truly believe in it and want every child on this planet to understand the tools and incorporate them in their life, the fear goes away. I have such a strong knowing and certainty that I want every child to understand They can be, do, or have anything and have the confidence to try is what I really want to shout to the universe. After being in this pandemic for almost a year, I have seen so many kids and families suffer. It is my passion and what wakes me up at 4 a.m. to instill these tools into these precious souls that I wish I had when I was their age, because I know my life would have been a lot easier and my decisions would have been unquestionable and I would have been unstoppable. Before I introduce my next guest that I have thoroughly enjoyed learning about, I want to let you know, if you want to get on the waiting list for my next Raising Confidence course, please send me an email to ashleygonner at gmail.com. Or if you just want to get informed when I have free classes or on scripting or manifesting or learning mindset tools, or when I have free guest speakers like Royce or Ellie Molina, who will teach you all about the manifesting and just to learn an amazing life. They're both such amazing um, guests that I've had on this podcast, and I'm sure I'll have more. You will be in the know. So just send me an email. I can't wait to connect with you so you can start creating a life of your dreams and realize you and your family or kids can use these magical tools to create a life beyond your wildest dreams. Now on to our episode. I found my guest today by listening to a podcast she was on. I was so intrigued by her story and how she created her life with basically nothing. I knew I had to have her on. She gives people hope and so many manifesting tools and a story that will make you realize if she can do it, you can do it. 
Her name is Hazel Ortega. She is an inspiring author, serial entrepreneur, and master of miracles. For years, Hazel believed that her story was so much worse than anyone else, and she let it define her. Today, she is going to take you on a journey as she shares with us on how to become the master of your miracles. From her humble beginnings of growing up in poverty and a gang-infested neighborhood in Los Angeles, California, Hazel was able to strengthen her mind and spirit and visualize her dream life and create it. She truly embodies the phrase that nothing is impossible unless you truly believe it is. I know you are going to get so many valuable tools from Hazel. You might need to take some notes. She is a bright light in this world. I haven't even met her yet, but listening to her and reading her book, From Bounce Checks to Private Jets, which I love the name. She is a beautiful soul here to inspire others to live the life of their dreams and don't settle. Because anyone can do what Hazel did. They just need to believe it. So without further ado, let's bring Hazel on and let her share her magic with us. Welcome to the show. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Like before I pushed record, I was telling you that I've enjoyed so much. I feel like you're my soul sister. We speak the same language. Um, So many people, you know, live the, what was your, so many of us are realistic and reasonable. I loved that quote because it's so true. And Mm -hmm. when you aren't, and when you realize you can have more than just being realistic and reasonable, and you can dream as big as you want, like you did and get what you did because you believed it is such a powerful story to, you know, just to inspire others to know that it is, if she can do it, I can do it. So will you take us down um, the road? Just kind of, I, I know we, we talked about you growing up in the gang infested rats and all <laughs> the terrible area in LA, but explain that and how your mom and your, all the whole story of how you kind of you know, began? Sure. Well, my story started first beyond um, me being born. My parents were both born in Mexico and they emigrated to the U.S. And by the time I was born, they were already separated. Then my mom ended up being a single mom and remarrying several times. And what I write about in the book that's quite curious is that we grew up in a 60 unit apartment building and everybody there was poor. And my mom, every time that she broke up with a boyfriend or got a divorce, we moved from apartments, but always stayed in the same apartment building. (laughs) So it was like, we were on the first floor, on the second floor, the third floor, and then like different numbers, but we always stayed in the same apartment building. Uh, so then my mom had seven children with five different men. Wow. And each one of these guys um, ended up being like very pivotal parts to our lives, right? Because we see them as our fathers and then they leave. And so that, you know, occurs to the child and to me that, that I'm not good enough mm-hmm. and that I'm not lovable and that I'm not worthy for them to stay or come back to me and so these things even though the kids seem to be distracted and they they don't really pay attention there you will grow up and you have to deal with those feelings right there's even a book called um feelings buried alive never die oh (laughs) either deal with them as a kid or you're gonna deal with them as an adult and so there, there was that going on and then there was not enough we didn't have enough of anything, our resources, right? We didn't have enough money. So growing up on welfare, everything was limited. Uh, food, clothing, shoes, you know, all the other resources, um, a car, gasoline. We, we, we were day to day. We didn't have any money. Even having lunch money would be a miracle if I had a quarter a day to wow. buy myself a bag of chips. It would be a miracle for that to happen. Yeah, and so I did grow up poor and then to add more problems to that, that it was a gang infested neighborhood. I grew up with one of the worst gangs in the world. Um, the huh. president of the United States was even mentioning them. Um, it's the Mara Salvatrucha. And it's a rival gang. It's a Salvadoran gang. And Mexican and Salvadorans 
in poor neighborhoods do not get along. Hmm. And that was the biggest gang that we had. And they used to fight with machetes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So when I was growing up, we, we did have drive-by shootings that happened towards my late, uh, late teens, right. but my childhood years, it was a lot of knife fights, a lot of like gang fighting, like really using your hands and fist fighting and, and stabbing. The drive-by shooting started when I was about 16 years old. Wow. And Are you looking at your window in your apartment at this, or how do you know what's going on? Are you hearing it? Oh, more, most definitely. You hear guns going <laughs> off. Yeah. And your my building was riddled with bullets. Our oh. cars outside in the street were with bullets. Wow. Um, so the gang members would drive by and yell out the name of their gang and then shoot at our building because gang members lived in our building gang members would hang out in front of our building. And so they would come down the street racing fast and shooting out their cars. Oh. And so a lot of times these kids would scatter and then run into the, the doors that are open. And so they would end up inside our apartment trying to get away from the gang, the rival gang that was driving by. Oh Luckily God. we lived on the second floor. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. What so is your mom can... doing? Does your mom like sitting there protecting? I mean, what, how does uh, that work? Yeah, my mom was very strict with us. She wouldn't let us be outside because of uh, that. Imagine you just have to be so protective. And we, that was part of our neighborhood. That's just every day that happens. And you know, kids think that nothing's going to happen to them. And so we thought my mom was just overly strict and unreasonable and like just a really, you know, bad mom, you know? Right. Oh, funny. <laughs> It just took a lot for her to have to raise us. And it's like, you know what? She was actually like the best mom anybody could have because like to be a, a good, like a fun mom and like, you know, like a mom that lets the kids do anything, that's that's not really a good mom. You right. know, a good mom wants to make sure that the kids are safe and, you know, teaches you things. And so it was really hard for my mom to raise us because all we wanted to do was just hang out with our friends and go to the beach and do all the, you know, the things that you, that kids do, go to your friend's house and listen to records and things like that. But my mom wouldn't let us go because the whole neighborhood was so infested with gangs. Just walking to your friend's house, you could, you know, get shot. And she couldn't, you couldn't move from that apartment building? No, we did have opportunities to move, but my mom was always scared to take a chance. Like, hmm. what about if I can't afford it? What if something changes and, and uh, we're homeless? Wow. Okay. So she has that mindset and look yeah. at what you, she created in you, like you just turned that around. So talk about self-limiting beliefs that were in you as a child. Yeah. I totally learned from my mom so many things and then I had to undo right. as an adult. Um, but I did for a long time have that mentality and Apart from the gangs, then, you know, growing up there, then my, you know, I did have a, a best friend that was killed by gangs. He was stabbed when, when uh, we were only 12 years old Ugh. and my cousin was killed in a drive-by shooting. Oh my, my cousin was the one doing the drive-by and then the gang rep members ended up killing him. Oh, wow. And he was, he lived in the apartment building with me. I lived in apartment six and he lived in apartment three. So he was like a brother to me. We grew up that close. Wow. Um, then from there, my mom ended up killing her boyfriend in a domestic oh violence situation. Yeah. And then she killing him angry. what by a gun? How does she kill him? She killed he he would sell guns, so she killed him with his own gun. Wow. Yeah. And then she fled, so she became a fugitive for five years before going to prison for twelve years. Yeah. So it was like this whole world of that. Wow. Of her being a fugitive. When she left, she was pregnant. So she already had a one-year-old and here she was pregnant with her seventh child. And she fled and left a nine-year-old with me. And then she took the one-year-old and of course her pregnancy and she fled. And then I raised the nine-year-old. She never came back? She, no, she, no, she was a fugitive she came back when she got caught she went to prison and then I ended up raising those two boys that came to live with me when they were four and six years old so it's really hard to raise 
those boys, you know, for the obvious reasons, um, not having a father and then not, and then not having a mother. Um, so I really was challenged right there. And then what ended up happening to me too, is I, I got a job uh, right after high school. I didn't even get my high school diploma. I went straight to get a job. And when I got my job, I thought that that was like the best job I could ever have. Right. And I ended up earning $15 an hour. And you thought that was jackpot? (laughs) Yes. Yes. I was, I was doing the best from anybody in my family. I Uh really thought that I was like, you know, hit the jackpot and I could be at that job for the rest of my life. Uh I didn't have any vision of myself, a higher self uh, of, of like having a career, having a business, making more money, not at all. I could see myself being a secretary at $15 an hour for the rest of my rest life. Of your life. Wow. And consider myself very lucky. Huh. Did you grow up like with religion? Did you believe in God? Did your mom like teach you that kind of stuff? Yes. Well, as Mexicans, we are Catholic. Right. And it's very important to believe in God and fear God and like all right. those stories, right? They work for that reason as well. Right. So that we can be safe, you know, if you misbehave or if you're, you know, rude to your mom, God is watching, you know, right. you're going to get it. You're going to get it. So you did have the spirit, you had a spiritual kind of raise, like she raised you in that way. For sure. We got baptized. I did my okay. communion, like those types of things. Yes. Okay. But we didn't go to church on Sundays again because of the whole world of being poor we didn't have like clothes we didn't have you know you go to church and then there's there's a routine there there's a whole thing about it so we didn't go we didn't go to church but my mom did talk to us about God Hmm. definitely and then my neighbors they were Christian and Catholics and so we got that from them as well my aunts, my uncles. So would you pray at night? Please, God, get me out of here. Or what do I, what do I doing? I'm not going to graduate from high school. I'm going to go work at this place for $15 an hour. And, oh, he answered your prayer at that point, right? No, we didn't. I didn't pray for a better life. I thought that that, that, that was my life. And just okay. like everybody in my family, we thought we were destined for poverty. We were not expecting something better. And we were not asking for something different. Like that's what we got. Right. Like, what I remember is like, you know, um, prosperity and abundance and luxury. That's for other people. It wasn't mm-hmm. for us. And I was fine with that. I was not asking for more at all, which is another thing that, you know, that I know that our, some, a lot of our parents tell us is just to be, you know, happy with what we have and content and don't ask for more. Mm-hmm. You know, be grateful that you're healthy. Be grateful that you have family. Be grateful that you have a roof over your head. Like just basic, as long as you have the basic things that you need, you're ahead of the game. So for my mom, my mom came from poverty, like where she lived in a, in a shack in Mexico. Wow. Huh. And here being in the United States, no matter how poor you are, you're way better than you are if you're poor in Mexico. Right. So she felt very grateful. And if we were to ask for anything, we, we were being blessed because, huh. because we were very lucky to be American citizens and to have food and a roof over our heads. And so we, I never asked for more. I did, wasn't aspiring for more. What I wanted was to be able to pay my bills and, and, and raise those it. babies. How do you raise your babies and work all day long? All those yeah. kids. Yeah. So my mom was a stay at home mom. She was on welfare. So that afforded her to stay home. Right. And she had her own economy in this building, this 60 unit apartment building. You sold things, you bought and you resold things for more. Um, your neighbor sells candy, your other neighbor can babysit your kid, you know, like, so it, it, we all like helped each other out. Huh. So we were able to survive with the help of others. Do you think that part, borrow like, money, borrow but you know, how you, how you were like, your mind thinks now do you think like you learn from your mom like you're just going to make some make it work you're going to figure out a way to like make an extra five dollars here and you know do sell that for more i thought it was possible yeah huh neat yeah okay so i never saw my mom go to the bank oh wow i never saw her write a check 
I never saw her go to work. Um, so anything that had to do with money, I did. I had no foundation wow. about that. Huh. A big missing in my life. Wow. Okay. So I want. So the cool part is that now you're working at this law firm as a secretary. You worked there for 17 years, right? Yeah. Okay. So in your you get um, disability because of the way the chair is too low or whatever that you, something's happening. So we yeah, go I, was to injured. That? I was injured on the job because I was sitting at a desk for somebody shorter than me. So after seven years of being a secretary, I ended up with an injury. The doctor told me I couldn't do my job anymore. And remember that I thought that I was going to be there forever. Right. So when they told me I couldn't do my job anymore, I instantly became fearful that I was going to be homeless. Like it was the worst thing that I ever could happen to me is to lose my job. And so the doctor told me to go back to school. My boss told me to go back to school and I did. I went back to school. I got my high school diploma when I was 30. Wow. Yes. And then I didn't stop going to school. I, I became an educational psychologist and becoming an educational psychologist. Uh, first of all, I definitely give credit to my mentors that they believed in me. Mm -hmm. that I could do that because I didn't want to be a professional. <laughs> I even thought they were bothering me, you know, oh, but who are your mentors that, who you worked for? Who were yeah, the mentors? my bosses? Okay. Right? So anybody in my neighborhood, they pretty much thought that, you know, you're going to grow up, get married and have kids. And that's it. Like even the teachers, they weren't asking me what I was going to do after I graduated high school, what college was I going to go? Nobody asked huh. me that. No one did. And my mentors did. I had a judge who was a mentor to me. And then I had a lawyer who was a mentor. And then um, they all saw something in me and that I couldn't even see in myself. And hmm. even one time the attorney told me, what are you going to do next after I got my AA degree? And I mm -hmm. said, oh, I, that's it for me. I'm here. I'm, I'm going to work for you for the rest of my life. And he told me, oh, no, you're going to be a professional. Think oh. about what you want to do. Oh, I love yeah. that. And so he and I saw him every single day. So he was a really big influence in my life. Huh. So mentors are really important. If you don't have mentors, put mentors into your life. Find them. I agree. 100 percent. Yes. People contact me all the time through social media. And mm -hmm. they ask me questions, they ask for mentorship, they, they know that that is what you need to be successful. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what that was about, you know, mentors usually have a higher vision of yourself than you can see, right, um, see for you. Um, and then from there, I, I started my first business in my garage. I couldn't afford rent for an right. office so in the garage, I didn't even have money for the business. I got uh, donations. Somebody gave me two desks. Somebody uh -huh. gave me two computers. Somebody else it. gave me letterhead and, and envelope wow. stationery. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it was just like, you know, and then somebody else created my corporation. I didn't have any money. So I right now your mentors are, th that guy is your main influence. Are you um, like now starting to like, or how are you manifesting all these things that you're putting in your garage? What are you doing to manifest that? Well, Can you look back and look what you did? Yeah, um, he was definitely a mentor and he started his own business. So him and I worked at a law firm and then we left the law firm and started off on our own. So I helped him start his first business. Okay. And then he also grew and expanded. And so I was a part of that. And then I went into my garage and then I grew just the way he did. He also didn't have money to start his own law firm. He okay. took out money from his wife's 401k plan. And oh, wow. that's how he started his own law firm. Huh. So I didn't even have a 401k. I did have a line of equity. And so I took out a line of equity and I had it available in case the company didn't make any money. Okay. So, um, and that was the way I, I attracted my business partner. I told her, leave your job and you work and I'll bring in the business. So we had two different roles. I was like doing the marketing right. and bringing in clients. And she was actually doing the counseling work that we do today. Ah, oh, got it. Okay. So you're in your garage, you're raising your, your mom's, your brothers and your, my, what, your daughter. 
Yeah. And we do that. And then we start doing well right away. So it was great because I did create a vision for that. And I knew I had a lot of contacts and net, you know, your network is your net worth. I knew I had a network. I was a secretary for 17 years. I knew a lot of lawyers and they're the ones that send business to us. Uh. So um, I tapped all my friends that I had. I made a list of all of the contacts that I had and I picked up the phone and I asked them to please support our company. And they did and they have, and they still do right now. Oh, cool. Okay. Huh. Very loyal. I've been, um, I've been doing this kind of business for about 16 years now, which is okay. vocational counseling for injured workers in California. Okay. Okay. So now I want to get into this, like how you did this vision and created this new and new life that you saw before it actually happened go into that because you did get, you do believe in coaching and all these mentors that you were hiring to like help you. And I remember listening to something where you found somebody, it was like $35 an hour and you could barely afford it, but you knew it was important to invest in yourself and get to, so you could take those steps. Yeah. So this business that we started, basically my business partner and I had the vision that we were going to replace our income from jobs and get it from our own business. So we would have the freedom in our schedule so we could be stay-at-home moms. We both were moms. Okay. So that was number one what we wanted, right? We wanted to be home with our kids. Then uh, we made two to $4,000 a month, each of us. And we were very happy with that because that's what we said we wanted. We wanted to replace our income with working from home. Right. And we did that. And we did that for five years because that was our vision. We got exactly what we said we wanted and we raised our kids. Then I met a coach five years into my business. I met my coach and then she had some tools that I did not know about, which, you know, creating your one page plan, your why, you know, your values, your mission statement, your vision, like all of that, I had no, no experience with. And I started getting coaching. First, I went for free to all her free stuff. And then it was like, you know, you should really invest in a one-on-one with me. And it was really scary. It's $35 an hour. You know, it, I couldn't afford it. I thought, but then I thought, you know what, uh, I'm just going to cut something else off somewhere else and invest right. the $35,000, $35. <laughs> I have already paid her $35,000. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure now. <laughs> yeah. And my other coaches now that are higher level coaches, now right. that I got myself out of the garage, you know, now I have, uh, I changed my coaches. when I upgrade myself, I changed my coaches also. So like if I'm, aspiring to have my company be a $10 million plus company. I want to coach with coaches that work with those companies at that level. Right. right? If I want to be a celebrity on television, I want to coach with people that have clients that are on television and are celebrities. Yes. So that's, that's one of the biggest things also. And I want to see and work with my coaches that are successful themselves. So that's really important also. I grew together with the coach. So I saw her at a public library where she didn't pay for the room. So it was free for her. Then I was getting free. Then when she upgraded and started to pay rent somewhere, then I upgraded and started to pay rent somewhere else. So we kind of grew together. Yes. And then eventually I I took myself out of there. Uh, But I, I totally credit her a lot because she told me, I want, I, she put all the women together. She had like 12 clients and she said, I want you to be million dollar plus women business owners. And I looked at her and I was like, and I raised my hand and I said, I don't want to, I don't want to make a million dollars. And she said, what, why not? And (laughs) I said, because I don't want to do what it takes to make a million dollars. So my limiting belief was that to make a million dollars, I'd never see my family because I'd be working all the time. I'd have to get up at four in the morning and go to bed at midnight because you have to be working all the time. Right. (laughs) I love it. Which a big lie because once we hit a million dollars, I work less than I've ever had. The more money I make, the less I do. (laughs) Yes. Oh, I love it. That I just, you know, you think of people that have stop at that right there. I'm not going to make a million that, you know, they don't can't even go. But when you hear, when you push past that fear, 
And then you realize like all those little beliefs that you think are true aren't, aren't true that you just give a meaning that's they're completely false. And if people saw that and could push through that and get to this amazing, the brightest light that you're like, Oh my gosh, this is freedom. You know, you're not stuck in, in this other, you know, whatever, like handcuffs where you can't even do anything. You're now you're free because you did it. You know, yeah. and now you can do more because you realize once I took that step and realized now I can see, you know, you go down the thing and the lights open up. I would see like, once you realize it kind of in my life, when I've done something and I'm like, oh, I could do that. Then I think I could do that. You know, then you, then you have so much more confidence. And that's why, like, even as a mom teaching my girls, like, well, look what you did there, you know, always. And I love how you talk about celebrating your wins. Mm -hmm. and how important that is. Cause I feel that too, because then you, you know, you give yourself like, Oh, you know, look at what I did. You know, I mean, it raises that. Why do you believe in that so much? Uh, why well, I, I believe in adding to yourself, like accomplishing things, celebrating them. And then that makes you more confident. But if we just, let's just say we have a big goal, right? So I, I talk about in my, in my book and in my courses about having a miracle mindset. Okay. Mm -hmm. That means that you create such a big dream. It's, it's huge, right? Like, let's just say climbing Mount Everest, but then you you know, to get there, you first have to probably climb other mountains. Right. Yeah. But if you, if you don't celebrate every mountain that you're climbing to get to Mount Everest and you don't get to Mount Everest yet, is going to take you maybe five years to prepare for Mount Everest. You feel like a failure, like you're not successful, but you are guess what, you know, a year ago, you couldn't even climb 12,000 feet, you know, right. and here you are now doing that. So you celebrate that. So you have to feel successful along the way to yes. be able to do that. And guess what? I have been to Mount Everest. And what do you think you see when you get to the top of Mount Everest? <laughs> a lot of other mountains to climb. So right. do you ever really arrive, you know, every right. time you hit your goal, there's more, there's right. more, there's more. So you want to have such enjoyment of that, you know, and you attract more to celebrate. I celebrate all, every single day, different things. Even if it's my sister calling me, I'll turn around and tell my, my boyfriend, like how great it was that my sister called me. Uh -huh. like, so I celebrate everything. I get my nails done. I'm so I feel right? so good. <laughs> <laughs> Especially these days, we just, nothing's yes. been open. I'm finally like, where, what is going on? I feel like I saw someone with their nails polished. I'm like, are there, do you go through the back door or something? What don't I know? <laughs> but um, when you, when you, I get the whole thing, but you know, when you think of, you get to the top of the mountain and you know, what's next, the next mountain to climb and why are we here to grow? You know, why, if we're not going to keep climbing the mountain, let's just go die because you know, it's either, either, or, because I feel like the whole thing about being, you know, reasonable and realistic and so boring and like life is not, you're not, there's no contrast, you know, They're, you're just like this, this one flat liner. And when you yeah. grow, right. But the thing about it is a lot of people don't know that there's more. They don't know. Right. They're just like blind spots. And that's where I was un you know, until I was 36 years old. I just thought that that was life. And it was like Groundhog Day. Like there was no reason why the next day would look any different than the day before. Right. I was like a victim to life. Like everything was just happening to me. Yes. As a matter of fact, just recently, somebody was supposed to come to my house. And I said, okay, so are you coming today? And then they said, well, I don't know. Right now I'm having coffee. I don't know what's going to happen next. So I don't know if I'm coming today. I, you, you make what's going to happen next. You, you know, you don't, right. you're not at the effect of life. You, if you say you're going to come, you're going yes. to come. Right. You take and action. I don't even think they, believe, they understood what I was saying. Right. Like, no, they don't. <laughs> what you say is going to happen is going to happen. Yes. So, but like even myself, so from, you know, zero to 36, I really just thought life was just, it just happens. And I was in this, in my, in this situation where I was, you know, in, in, in a trajectory of being in poverty for the rest of my life. Right. Groundhog uh, I, but, you know, 36 years old, I become a psychologist. I'm fist fighting with my sisters. I am already divorced. I have broken relationships. I'm a violent person. I don't know how to solve my problems. Wow. And I'm bouncing checks. <laughs> so my life is really not working right 
Okay. And I go to per, a personal development seminar. You know, you know how you mentioned that you love personal Yes, I love them. Yes. I'm going to be taking personal development seminars until my last breath. Me too. I love them. I don't want to be without them. I don't either. What happens when I'm not in a personal development course, I become ordinary. Yes. You know, and I feel like we are extraordinary. Yeah. We are all extraordinary, but when we're not, it's an action word. Right. You know? what, which one did you go to? Which personal development? Landmark education. Oh, yes. I've done that. Okay. To me, yes. that's the best one. But I also go to other stuff. Right now, I'm about to leave to Joe Dispenza. She has you a- are? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to come. Yeah. Oh, it, my gosh. It's sold out already. But he, I, I, I watched out for when the next one was, and I registered right away. So I'm always doing personal development seminars. I'll I'll take different peoples. I don't just do landmark now. I, I'll take a lot of different ones. And every day I listen to Marianne Williamson. Uh, so right now, you know, we were talking about mentors. My mentors have changed. Marianne Williamson is a mentor. Mm-hmm. I take Oprah as a mentor and JLo and Jesus Christ. Like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I've, I've accomplished a lot. And at this level, finding mentors could be challenging, but there's always somebody out there that you can study. Yes. Anybody who you want to be like, you can find them and study them and find out what they did. What are they doing now? How do they plan their day? What right. are their habits? And then you can emulate yeah, them. Copy it. You know, people think, oh, I'm not going to, I said, yes, they know how to do it. That's success, right? Success leaves clues. Totally Follow it. See, you know, I would look to see, you know, what, what are they reading? Read those books. Right. What are they doing? Do that. Yeah. They, they already did it. Right. Yeah, and so it's you get free. you get the vision. I want because I think the with your book with the bounce checks. So you're bouncing checks. You're like you're struggling. You're 37, and then what? Yeah. Where did the light well, bulb go off? I'm in this this uh, development seminar for the first time. They asked me where do I see myself in the future, and I sat there and they're like, okay, you got 10 minutes. Envision your future and you know, draw it. And I sat there and I could not figure anything out for my future that was different wow. than what I was doing in the moment. And so mm-hmm. I have it that anything that's missing is whatever you're not putting in at any moment, right? And so I became really responsible for my for myself. And I thought, well, what could I do so that I could create a vision? Because I was stuck. I couldn't think of anything. Because again, I had the old pattern, right? Like if I said I was going to uh, be a manager at my job, then it was going to occur to me that there's already a manager there, you know, and she's good. And, you know, what would it take for me to be a manager there? Like it was impossible. Right. It was hard work and it was impossible. And then do I really want that? That's a lot of responsibility. It's not (laughs) a fun job. You know, all the things that your brain invents to keep you safe. Yes. Well, I was sitting there and I couldn't think of anything. And then I thought, well, you know what? If I believe in miracles, then what is possible? Right. The miracles, that's why I wrote about that, the mastery of miracles, because a miracle, you don't have to make that happen. A miracle happens with no explanation, Mm -hmm. right? And so the minute that, that you start to say, well, that happened because of this, this, and this, then it ceases to be a miracle. Right. And we're very clear about that, right? So when... I said, if I believe in miracles, what is possible in my area of my family, my love life, my finances, my career, my lifestyle, all of a sudden, really huge things started showing up. And I, I wrote that I would be flying in private jets, that I'd have $3 million or more, uh, that I had the love of my life, that I had a relationship with my sisters that looked like we were in heaven. And that I, I would have an extraordinary life. And last, I said, I, I would have a life that looked like I was always on vacation. Oh, <laughs> I love it. And I so said that, that would happen within five years. Okay. At the time, I was bouncing checks. I was making about four to $6,000 a month. I was fist fighting with my sisters. I was divorced. I was already broken up with many boyfriends. Like, it was nothing that I believed. But I did believe in miracles. And so when I created that, that changed everything. And then I drew everything. 
and I said I wanted everything in five years and in two years I had it all uh, for no reason other than I created my vision yes. and then my vision attracted everything to me. Yes. So for me, uh, my book and my, you know, my courses is about mastering miracles. Yes. I call mine. Mine is magic. Same thing. The same thing. It's not, magic. Yeah. that's the word magic? I use. It's yeah. magic, you know, that's how I say, gosh, you know, look at what you did. It's like all of a sudden there's magic and you know, is miracles come from Marianne Williamson because of the course of miracles or what did you no, study that course? My belief, just your belief. Yeah. But just like magic, you know, the word abracadabra yeah. actually means as I speak, I create. Oh, I didn't so, know that. Yeah. So when you speak, you are creating that. Yes. And if you create it from the future, like it already happened, your brain will believe it happened. And so yes. it will allow you to have it and attract it. Yes. But if, if we just say, oh, I, you know, we, we think of these things as goals, mm -hmm. then your brain is going to not let you have it because it'll be fearful because it's right. never seen you successful before. Right. Your so ego is holding you back, you right? Successful. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's one of the most important parts is like that you have to feel into all of it. Like it already happened. Mm -hmm. Your brain will be comfortable because, oh, you actually can get along with your sister. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's nice. She's loving. She's heavenly. Mm -hmm. Right. But if it's my normal average brain, it would be like, no, she's not. She's a right. fighter and she hates you. And you know, <laughs> like all these things. Right that you taught your brain to believe about her, right? Because right. nobody, you do it to your brain. Right. So you have to create the best case scenario. That's what I call a miracle mentality. You can call it a magical mentality. What I like about it is that it doesn't make you small, right? Because the right. minute that you think it's like a goal, it, it feels heavy and mm -hmm. it feels like work to do. And then you, you already know that you're not that kind of a person that'll make that happen. Like most people have an experience of themselves where they're not that person that's going to make something like that happen. Right. So with a miracle mindset, it allows you to do, to dream big. That's so yes. important. When you say like, it feels bad, like someone has a goal and they're like, oh, it just doesn't feel right. You know, I know people are, you know, you have to really, you have to believe it. Like that book. I love Wayne Dyer. You have to um, believe it before you see it, you know, like you just have to believe it in your heart. Like that's so strong and just let it go. I always say, surrender to God, like let, let it go. And it'll come in the right time. Totally. You know what? I, I um, was in escrow to buy another home mm -hmm. and it didn't go through. And I cried. I cried about it. It was like so devastating. It was like my dream home. Like right. I already saw it. I know that I'm going right. to be in the mansion, you know, and then it didn't go through. Uh -huh. And then I came to the house that I live in now and I bought it. And then I saw my drawing and I'm like, oh my goodness. I wasn't meant to have that other house. I wasn't right. meant to have this house. Right. Isn't that, you know, better than the other house. Right. But to live that way and to know that everything's always working for you, not to you and to just accept the days that that doesn't go right. I always tell that, you know, with my girls, I'll, there's something went wrong. I go, Oh, it's going to be so fun to see why it went wrong when in your mind, you think it went wrong, but really it didn't because something amazing is going to happen. You just know something better. Like, and just to have that, you know, in your brain wired, <laughs> and especially at a young age is what I'm trying to do with my girls, but to wire your brain to know that the, if the house doesn't work, it, it wasn't supposed to be, you know, if the, you know, what that job didn't come about, there's something better, you know, someone is, you know, cancels on this then great. I'll something better will come, but to have that mindset, you know, in life and to know that you're always, you know, everything's always working for you. Everything's perfect. You know, it's always perfect. It is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Who do you listen to? Like what books do you like? Who's your like go to besides Marianne Williamson? Would you love like what would be some turning point book in your life that you like read one day and thought, oh, gosh, I have to give this to people. Um, well, I, I like the four hour work week. Oh, if okay. people are inclined to want to start a business. Mm hmm. But also to have freedom, right? A lot, most of society is stuck in a 40 hour work week and where they work overtime also. 
and it doesn't give you freedom. Like you miss your kids' recitals. You miss important things in your family. Right. My mom was sick and died and I couldn't be with her because I had to work, you know? And so I like people to have their dream life, right? It means whatever is important to you that you have the ability to fulfill on it, right? Like be there for your, your dying right. parents, be there for your kids. If something happens at their school that you can just go right. when you have a job, that's not always the case. You can't do that. And then it impacts your income, right? So to have freedom, I love the four hour work week. So I have given that book out the most. Mm -hmm. I love uh, the mastery of, of love by uh, Don Miguel Ruiz. Yes, you I know, do the too. Four agreements yes. and then the mastery of love. Oh, yes. I love that book. Me and too. then right now I'm reading Abraham Hicks, Ask and It Is Given. It's given, I love that too. And I love manifesting. So Mike Dooley is a great yes. guy to read to talk about just the basics of manifesting because it's so hard for people to believe that they can have a life that's unrecognizable to them. Right. And so I think Mike Dooley does a great he job does. at opening it up. And we feel guilty too, because there's kids that are hungry in other countries and kids that are getting recruited to go to war in other countries. And like, why would, you know, why? You know, so it's hard. It's so hard, but his books give you a really good explanation of how it all is all over the world and how you need to just focus on yourself and having your best life that you can. Right. Right. We don't, we need to concern ourselves with us when we are doing really great. Guess what? Our kids do as well. Our community does as well. Our all, we, we actually get to expand and we can make a difference. So now that I've manifested all of these things, I have new visions and bigger visions than before. And then now I'm making a, I'm making a difference all over the world. Yes, and you so are. We have to just start with ourselves and make our own dreams come true. Yes. I love that. What would you, I just was thinking if you had to give advice, cause I know your daughter's younger, but, um, if you had to go back to, to you and those, uh, 18 year old, what would the advice, what would advice would you give you at 18 years old? So my daughter is 23 years old now. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> she's about to graduate from nursing school. So I'm very oh. proud of her. Oh, yeah. I, I have a remarkable daughter. Um, what I would advise I would give myself, I would, give the advice I give everybody right now, which is create a vision for your future. There's, you could live into that future, creating a vision and then, you know, getting into the right environment, right? So for me, my, when I created the future of being a student, you know, then I had students around me who were also using education as the vehicle to get out of poverty. So get into the right environment. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanna start a business, start talking to business owners right? If you want to lose weight, get together with the people that are losing weight. You have to change your environment. That right. is going to be indicative of your success. If you're dreaming, you have to share your dreams with people that are positive, high vibe. Otherwise, at the beginning, our dreams are so sen sensitive mm -hmm. that if anybody tells you like, oh, that can't happen, right. you're going to make your dream small and it'll, it could even kill your dream. So be very careful who you share your dream with, but definitely share it, but be very careful who you share it with. Yes. So I would tell myself, create a vision for yourself. Um, you know, start with gratitude, get a, a list of all the reasons why you're awesome, you know, and then of course, you know, your environment, change your environment. I always tell my daughter that there's, um, there's a little frog that's a killer frog. If you touch it, it's so poisonous, it kills you. Okay. They move the frog from its environment to a different environment where the plants that it was feeding off of were different plants. And the frog is no longer poisonous and deadly. So oh. you just have to change your oh, environment. Yes. You know? Yes. Because you could, yeah. So you're with people that are not aspiring for more, that are kind of thinking that this is it. And we just got to live it, you know, yeah. we're, not, we're not at, you know, creating dream lives. And so you just think that that's normal because nobody else around you is creating dream lives. No, get up, right. get out of there. And then, you know, get this new environment of women who are creating and making a difference in the world and you'll get inspired. Yes. Do you, do you, um, coach about like gratitude? What, what are your, 
like your top three things when you have a new client that you can, that you see, do you tell them, um, what should they create a morning ritual? Do they write stuff down all the time? How often do they write their vision? Is it every one year? Is it every, you know, 10 days? How do you do that? Yeah. So I don't do individual coaching. Okay. I am a psychologist, but I don't do individual coaching. I haven't done that in a long time. What, but I do create a vision of where do you want to be in 10 years, then move up to 10 miracle goals for that year based on your 10 year vision. Right. And so that's what I talk about in my course. And in my, if I share on social media, you follow me, yeah. like that's the kind of stuff I talk about creating a big vision for your 10 years, then bringing it to your one year, 10, 2021 20, goals that are aligned with that. Then your 90 day. And then that gives you your daily actions. That gives you like, like you jump out of bed because you got things to do. You got to do yes. to make here in the world. So those are the things, of course, if you, if you don't have a gratitude practice, start making a gratitude list. I, I don't have to make a list. What I do every night when I'm in bed, I, I go down my list. I don't write it out anymore. It's kind of like second nature already. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm grateful all the time. I'm so present to everything. Even right now being with you, I'm, I'm so grateful to have this type of conversation. Mm -hmm. it's not the kind of conversation you can have all the time right you know so I'm, I'm grateful to meet you know like-minded people yes and I'm grateful right now to be able to share my story and make a difference in people's lives and to be able to offer my book and tools to end suffering in the world you know I think people if they know better they do better so the work that you and I are doing is so important we're making a difference out there yeah. So, you know, you just, you get, I mean, I'm 52 and I, you know, you think, oh, some, a lot of people get to the, you know, in their fifties and they think it's time to, you know, slow it down and retire and all these things. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, I'm just starting. Like, I can't, there's no way, like I still have so much to do and give back and serve and, you know, make a difference. It's just so much in me that, you know, just like, just watching people like you. And that's the, that's why when I saw you, I'm like, I want you to be my friend because you lift me up. I want to be around people that lift me up, that have a vision, you know, that see the, you know, speak the same language, but also see in me something, you know, cause I always do that for, I try to help people. Like I see this, I mean, I do that for kids cause it's a little bit easier because they aren't so guarded. I mean, they're still guarded, but once I get the guards off and I realize they realize that they can be, do, or have anything. And that the only person that's stopping them is themselves. Mm -hmm. And then they realize, oh, I can do that. I'm like, yes, you can. Let's take one step every day to get there. So it just, uh, you just lift me up. I love uh -huh. that. But you know, okay. So I want to, before we go, cause it's almost time, um, you're, so you've op you have 12 different businesses. So people only think you've, you've accomplished your 3 million, your mansion and your jet. <laughs> so I need to go a little bit more because there's a way more that you've accomplished than just that. Yeah, I have, I have been the founder of over a dozen businesses. Uh, currently I'm starting a new online company for these training programs. Um, then we have the number one best restaurant in los angeles wow you know real estate holdings and things like that but right now my legacy is what i'm interested in and making a difference in the world i want to end poverty i want to end violence against women and i want to end gender equality um, right here behind me are the united nations sustainable development goals so i'm participating i'm a united nations ambassador i'm helping business owners create these SDGs for their own company so that they can contribute and solve these problems as well. Most people think that the United Nations is for third world countries. Right. In reality, we have those problems here as well, right? We have violence against women. We have, right. you know, gender, you know, inequality right now going on. So that's what I'm doing. I'm really proud of that. And then that work is like all across the world. So Wow. That's my big, hairy, audacious goal. My vision is to end poverty and violence against women and have gender equality. Oh, I love that. Amazing. Do you have like, when you, the last time you wrote out your vision, did you, you did a 10 year vision yeah. or one, one year, what would be like your, what do you say is your top thing 
besides that? Like what, what would be like something you're really working towards? I know you want to help do all that, but is there something else that you're really trying? I mean, of course I have uh, my money goal, right? And then I have my goal of keeping families together. That's really important for me. I, I want to end suffering in the world. And I think family staying together helps with that. I do have like changing the lives of injured workers that 100% of my clients that go to school graduate mm. and making people's dreams come true. So with my work, people actually create dreams. And so you, like they say, you can't have a dream come true if you don't even have a dream. Right. So I, my, one of my new taglines I'm working with is I'm making people's dreams come true. Oh, I love that. And you are, oh, you are such a gift. What, um, if you were going to give someone, you know, I, be, one last thing, I feel like there it's easy to, it's easy to say that what we're doing, like how we believe and everything, but when people get stuck with their fear and they just can't get that, get over that hurdle and it just stops them, you know, it's like they're hitting it and hitting it and they just can't get over it. What do you, how do you help that? How, what would be that advice to like overcome that? Well, fear is what stops everybody, right? right. All right. So fear is past based, right? You're focusing on the past. Anytime you're afraid, you're, you're looking at, into the past because mm-hmm. you've seen yourself fail somewhere and your brain is reminding you and it's really good at reminding you. So the way to change and shift that is to have a vision of the future. Focus yeah. on your future. And then that's forward, not the past. Right. Or do it over and over and over again. You can create a vision for how you want the end of the day to day to look. You trick your brain, control your brain, control your thoughts. Everything has to do with thoughts. So 70,000 of our thoughts are a waste of time. Right. They have every single day. So you create your thoughts, you create, you put the words into your brain that you want them to go. Read positive stuff, talk about positivity, journal, all the journal from the best case scenario. Don't write in a journal how crappy your day went. Write about all the good things that happened in your day. Number one, we're alive. There's nothing better than that. We have a life. We are alive. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So just be positive, put, put things into your brain, all positivity, be very mindful what you're watching on television. What's, what's going in here, what's going in here, because Mm -hmm. it's going to be a memory that you're making in your brain. So you don't want to hear anybody's negativity. You don't want to watch negative stuff on television. Don't read it. Just make yourself a a bubble of positivity. Yes. I love that. (laughs) I always say like, you know, if if you don't believe that you can do it, just fake it. Just pretend. Let's just pretend, write a story that you did it. You know, let's go, you know, pretend let's, I always like live that way until I figured out I could do it. I'm like, it's just fake it till you make it. Just do that. Let's just pretend that you did that. (laughs) And then we'll, if you act it, then you'll see, oh, maybe I can. Anyway, I love that. Anyway, I love meeting you. And I, so your book, people can buy that on Amazon, which I highly recommend. And even all the people that read that, all the testimonies that, um, on your website are just beautiful, like tears and read it over and over again. And then your website, I would, um, it's the mastering miracles.com, right? The mastery of miracles.com. And what I actually do in my website is I give you a visioning guide that you could download is the exact thing that I did that helped me to create my dream life. The very first time I ever did it, I recreated it and I have an audio and a free worksheet download so that you could start writing out your dream life. Yes. So please, I love it. You can go out there and sign up for it and, and do it yourself. I'd love to hear about your dreams that you create. Yes. I love that. And I did it and I sent it to my, the, my group of kids. So they did half of it one day. And then the next day I I broke it up in two, but I just, you know, even waking up for like, I get up at four in the morning, but I could not wait (laughs) to read their sweet 10 years. I said, okay, so, um, so I'm going off, I'm interviewing this woman that, um, believes in this vision and I want to help. I want to use part of her tools. So I said, okay, let's say you're 14 today and in 10 years, you'll be 24. So what, and then we went down the whole thing, you know, where do you live? Are you married? You know, what kind of job? And, oh my gosh, the answers were, um, beyond, I mean, so they were precious. I just, so sweet. 
it just warmed. I, I have that passion in me. I just love you. I want these kids to vision, have a vision, you know, when now they do. And it's like, oh, I could do that. Oh, maybe I want to do that. You know, it's like, we're not just stuck in this little box with these, you know, our cell phones with our heads down all day, you know, let's look up, let's see the, how, let's see this dream that you want, you know, and when you have people like you that have done it and, you know, show people that, you know, I, I came from nothing. If I can do it, you can do it. I mean, there's nothing different. Mm -hmm. You have a different, you know, it's like everyone has the same exact thing. Just change your mindset. Yep. Change your Program mindset. your mind. Yeah. Your do it. Yes. You can I have it. It all. Yes. Oh, I could sit here all day with you. So you're <laughs> my new friend. And now that you live not only an hour away from me, when everything opens, I will be um, coming to visit you and seeing your mansion and all your amazing things. Mi casa es tu casa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so thank much. You. Oh, thank Hazel. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you. You are just a, an angel and a blessing. And, you know, I, before I, um, was thinking of you coming on. You're 43. I've been doing this for 43 weeks. And most of it, it all, the whole thing's been in the pandemic, in a quarantine, right? It has li lift, lifted my life up. And when I meet people like you, and I know it comes in at the right time, you know, you just don't, you know, you'd wonder what, who's going to be 44, you know, the, how it all fo follows, you know, every week. Um, you come to me at the right time. Cause you just, there's a spark in you. You inspire me. You, I have to get off here and start writing out my, you know, you just, you, you want to do that too, because look what you did. You know, you just make people think, gosh, I need to get busy and start writing my dreams. Like I need to dream bigger. What am I doing? Like, this is life is sh too short to not dream big and live in a mansion and drive or be, on, be on a private jet. Yeah. And there's so much more too. It's not just the materials. No, stuff. and even be yes. The, just my just being, being so happy. grateful to be alive. Yes, being and happy. Enjoying life. Because yes. you can have. Trust me, you can have all the resources and be miserable also. Right. Yes. So you, got, you need to have a, a grateful heart and love and yeah. be not in fear. Be in love. Yeah. Yeah. You have two choices, right? Love or fear. Which one? only two. Yep. Pick one and hope you pick love, make life a lot easier. <laughs> anyway, I loved, I loved our conversation. Thank you. Me too. Thank you so much. I really oh, appreciate it. Thank you.